made a little addition to the workshop, or rather upgraded my old um, drill press. Um, this was on the Project Machinery website. So I called up my friend Richard and uh, agreed a deal. And uh, I mean, my old um, drill press was a uh, proper British Meddings. And this is a Far Eastern machine. I'm not sure exactly whether they're Chinese or Taiwanese. But the, uh, the Excel tools seem to have a, a pretty reasonable name, and um, I've, I'm quite impressed with some of the features on this thing. Uh, it's a two horsepower machine, it's got a number four Morse taper spindle. One of the features I've been looking for something with a rack and pinion rise and fall table for ages, because one of the things I always hated was. Uh, trying to lift the table up or down without doing yourself an injury and uh, well particularly given my current um, state with a dodgy hip and knee um, getting this in here is a bit of an exercise it weighs about a quarter of a ton but we did manage it um, it's got some nicely thought out features um, this collar here which you can rotate is um, a quick to set um, depth stop for the spinner which is rather nice and this lever up here uh, moves the motor in and out on its, um, its mountings you can just see a couple of washers in there that seem to be stops um, um, so that you can do the, uh, the belt changes it's seen very little use, I mean there's paint on most of the pulleys. Anyway, what I'm doing at the moment is, it's a three phase machine which never bothers me, um, but the motor on it is 415 volt only. It's not a star delta uh, 240, 415. So I'm um, just setting up to take it off um, and chances are I'll be able to open it up and find the star point and um, rewire it as a delta for 240 and run it on a VFD and uh, the motor is actually a cast iron casing it's a heavy lump so I've got a, um, a block of wood remains of a fence post clamped to the table and because it's rack and pinion I've now got it jacked up on there supporting the weight of the motor and uh, I can take the last bolt out and uh, swing it round and be able to lift it down onto the bench to work at it. Well, as you can see I got the motor out um, <laughs> no hassle at all um, and I've left the pulley on it uh, had this bit of heavy wall aluminium tubing on the shelf that it stands in nicely Obviously, I've uh, taken. There we go. It's a fan shroud that came off, and the the fan and the end bell. And it is, by the way, an NTN bearing in there, which is a reasonable brand. And what I'm looking for in here to reconfigure it is the star point. Um, Europe typically uses um, star delta switching for voltages because um, that's also the way the, um, uh, the substation transformers are configured is in star or delta for the two voltages. Uh, we tend to use only 415 volt three phase in the UK. But this is going to be a really easy one because if you look in here and into this bit of sleeving here uh, I can get the angle on it. One, two, and just down the bottom there, you just see it curling around. Three. So that's where the three windings um, connect together into a star. So somewhere in this sleeving there'll be a, a soldered joint. So all I've got to do is um, possibly cut some of the binding, get this um, the star point disconnected, um, solder on three pieces of wire um, to duplicate the three 
leads that are going out down there into the terminal block and uh, the windings will get reconfigured in delta um, so that will then be a 240 volt motor and I can run it off the VFD and the original <coughs> control gear is uh, down on the floor there and bolted to the side of the, the machine up here um, this cast in cutout I think would have been for a uh, uh, a standard no volt release um, for a single phase version and then it had the big control box um, with a contactor and so on for the, the three phase or they're, they're reusing this casting for a, a few different machines um, think as a certainly as a temporary measure I'll just bolt a, a bracket on here to mount the VFD but I prefer to um, to actually rig it up with uh, the VFD in an enclosure and remote controls but um, that'll be the quick way to get it sorted anyway this is uh, going to be a really easy um, conversion job uh, you can't always easily find the star point you know this motor's got a great big gap between the casing and the winding I can get my finger basically all the way down to the stator um, on some of them uh, it would all be in really tight and uh, you know I've had motors where I've almost given up trying to actually find out where that star point um, was because sometimes they um, will wind the stator and then press it into the outer casing um, particularly if it's an aluminium casing and uh, I've got another uh, job that may be much harder I've got another motor um, that is actually wired 415 in delta and 720 in star and that would be for a, um, a star delta starting setup and in order to get that down to 240 I may have to um, see if I can actually wire some of the coils in parallel which is a uh, more American style of um, dual voltage switching on a three phase motor we've got the, uh, the star point broken open and three new tails put on I've just got to slide the insulating sleeves down and they've been led out to where the terminal block is and uh, what I'll have to do is identify which of these uh, wires goes with which of the others so if that's L1, phase 1, I'll find the other end and that'll go to the phase 2 terminal, the other end of the phase 2 winding will go to the phase 3 winding, the other end of the phase 3 winding will then go back to the phase 1 winding and that will end up with the motor connected in delta for 240 volts. So this is a useful bit of um, knowledge when you come across a motor that says 415 on it, you open it up and it doesn't have um, you know, a 6 terminal connector block with um, configurable links, all is not lost, you can uh, nearly always uh, do this little mod and uh, turn it into a 240 volt motor and it's really up to you whether you want to uh, um, set it up so that you can actually swap it between the two configurations.